I believe that a lot of the people here, you may even be preaching to the converted and people who understand. What really concerns me is that every seat in this theater isn't filled. That's part of the problem. But I have a concern. I, first of all, I appreciate and respect all of the points that have been made tonight, but I do have a problem with the way one of them was made. When you make reference to corporate greed, multinational corporations playing into the hands of the left wing useful idiots who are the same people who are causing the United States, i.e. Obama, to turn against the pipeline of he's coming around, but he delayed all of that and that also caused United States interests to start funneling money into Canada to work against our oil sands, etc., etc., which in turn caused our Prime Minister to say, okay, if that's the way you're going to play the game, well, we can play, play hardball too. We'll take it to China. So that's actually part of the fallout of a very mistaken United States policy. But my real problem with all of this is it all goes back to the useful idiots of the left and the Occupy movement, etc. And they thrive on hearing us talk about corporate greed and multinational corporations. The real failure here... Is, is there a question? Yeah, the real failure Please, is, what, is what I'm saying. Is, ask your question. It's government. Government has to create an environment that facilitates what's being recommended. Is, 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 there a is it happening? Is this going to happen and how do we go about it? Great, okay. Uh, you had several things here. The first thing I want to address is uh, folks in the audience and getting this message out. Yeah, I have been beating this message for many years and extensively uh, since the book came out a year ago and of course since the film came out. And I find very receptive audiences when you get audiences but the media does not want to carry this story, and in particular, the liberal media doesn't want to carry this story. I was supposed to be on Ottawa Morning Radio this morning with the CBC Fred had arranged, a, Fred had arranged an interview. Well, their staffer called me yesterday. I, I had built my day around this, right? And I got a call while I was connecting the airport at uh, Chicago uh, yesterday about noon from the staffer who wanted to ask me a few questions about what we were going to talk about and prepare for the interview, which is typical. Well, as soon as she found out that I wanted to discuss ethics as well as just numbers, uh, she was obviously a little bit put off. And then she said, you know what, instead of just doing a straight interview, I'd like to bring in somebody from the other side that's pro-China so we can make this a debate and give both sides the issues. And I'm like, well, first of all, I don't really think there is another side of this issue, but bring it. You know, I, I, I can handle my own. I've done this before. It'll make it more interesting for the audience. Okay, so then she calls me back an hour later. Well, you know, I talked to this business consultant who's pro-China and pro fedba and we've decided we're just going to have her on the show exclusively because your two perspectives uh, are really apples and oranges that don't go together. And I tried to talk to her about this. It basically came down to, in her mind, ethics and business didn't go together in the same subject. So uh, I would strongly encourage you to contact the, uh, the CBC and let them know what you think about that. Yeah. I'm sorry you have to pay your taxes to support the state media censorship system. So your, your next comment had to do with uh, appeal to liberals. We try really hard to make this a bipartisan issue because we want to succeed, okay? And I don't agree and love everybody in this film. I happen to be a Republican and a relatively staunch libertarian. My uh, co-author and uh, producer in the film, Peter Navarro, has run for Congress as a Democrat. So, although I don't agree with everybody out in this film on every issue, we do agree on the fact that putting people in jail and forcing them to make products uh, cheaply is wrong. And we agree that when companies that claim to be capitalists and claim to be supporters of the free enterprise system exploit slave labor in another country, they are not standing up to the principles for which they claim to be. So I will call that corporate greed. I don't think making lots of money is corporate greed. If you design a beautiful product, praise Apple Computer and Steve Jobs, and you make it in a legitimate and ethical manner and people want to buy the hell out of it, get as much money as you can, yeah, okay? But if you choose to make a few more bucks by exploiting 
and other people who are being held down and letting their environment be destroyed and using their resources uh, from the uh, illegitimate government and transfer money, transfer billions and billions of dollars in capital and technology to a country that has nuclear missiles pointed at my family, you know, screw you, okay? Uh, and that, those corporations can take one big hike because they are not supporters of liberty and the capitalism that I support. Corporation in, in Asia, and I remember going to visit Huawei in China, and we were trying to sell them some of our networking products. We were one of the fortunate companies because we, they couldn't make semiconductors, and we were they couldn't copy our stuff at that point. And uh, I was trying to sell some of our networking products, and they proudly, proudly told us how they had stolen the uh, intellectual property of Cisco. Um, and that they would buy a few of our products so that they could steal our intellectual property. And they didn't feel bad about it at all. It was quite astounding. That next question. Okay. Actually, I have a, a few questions. But no, just, 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 just one question. You know, like, uh, I, I think that your film was very, well, I was very impressed. And uh, it was very clear and uh, very convincing. And it's uh, so... Uh, I was terrified, you know, like I feel very uh, sad, you know, disheartened to see this fact present so clearly. But how come those politicians, you know, in those, uh, you know, uh, the Western country don't see the way and you present it? You know, like can you elaborate on what you think? Why they intentionally or unintentionally, why people like uh, so blind? Okay. So I have walked through every office of Congress uh, at least three times uh, in the last year, uh, and to every Senate office, and I get to speak to maybe 5% of the, the, the representatives that I try to talk to, and out of there, there's a handful of maybe 12 on Capitol Hill that uh, want to hear about this. They are intentionally self-deluded because, again, these same corporations that are increasing short-term profits, mind you, this isn't good for the long-term benefit of these companies because they're losing their technology and intellectual property, which is the lot of They do it in the short term because the CEO is only gonna be there three to five years, and the shareholders are all speculators who are in and out of the stock on a monthly basis, um, are the ones that are footing the campaign bill for almost everybody on Capitol Hill. There's a few real stalwarts there, uh, and they're in our film, uh, you know, particularly, uh, Congressman Chris Smith, uh, I don't know if you guys ever see the work he's done on human rights and on trade, but uh, he is a great human being. Uh, and Dana Rohrbach, my good friend from California, uh, both live in relatively safe districts where they can afford to, uh, to tell the corporations where to go, uh, and they don't give super PAC money, okay? But the Democrats and the Republicans are completely bought out, and nobody's bought out worse than the Obama administration. Uh, they know what they're doing, uh, they're willing to sell their kids' future, uh, for a better vacation next year for themselves is all I can do. Okay, we've got last three questions. I want all three of you to ask your questions and then we'll have the panel and we'll, we'll go take a break. Martin? You know, I'll, we'll be outside and we can talk. Yeah. Okay, uh, real quickly, I think this lady actually, I, I was gonna ask about the lack of political will to address these things and I think you, you just addressed that. I just wanna make a comment very quickly. That is, I'm, I'm, I'm a lawyer in Toronto, and I have a client um, <coughs> at its peak manufacturing with had about 200 employees, and with the pressures from China, currently has about 37 employees. And they've actually tried to open an office in China and have run into an enormous issues in trying to compete fairly and have found much of their intellectual property has been pirated or stolen in one form or the other. And currently, even the current 37 employees are now facing layoffs and a program we have here in Canada is called WorkShare uh, as part of an, of an unemployment insurance program. But the main reason they're now under further pressure is because their customers in the United States are going out of business and they're losing their customer base to sell it. So, so it, it affects us um, quite strongly. But that was going to be, my question was going to be about lack of political will. So. And uh, Elsa? I'm, I'm almost the third question that's the same. How come they're, they're doing it? But I want to, in terms of Canada, relate it back to free trade long ago, where a lot of barriers were put down for the first time in Canada. And first of all, Canada was protecting its own, and then suddenly having to compete with the United States and compete with Mexican markets and asking, is this a continuing thing about not looking after your own? And last question. So, no answer? 
No, we're going to we're going to no, we're going to take all questions on. Okay. Last question. Hi, um, I just wanted to see if uh, I could get a comment on what, how you think that uh, economic activities by you know people like us uh, boycotting Chinese goods and then also at the higher level like uh, government reform with the Chinese government uh, would affect human rights in China, which you guys have commented a bit about, but also specifically in Tibet because uh, I'm Tibetan, so. Okay, great. Let me go first, and I'll ask each of our panelists to discuss that. Um, so there's the whole political will issue, uh, which we went into to some degree. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I've already forgotten what, where, where your question was. Does it link back to free trade originally? Okay. Like that so first of all, this, 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 this nonsense of free trade, and, and people love the word free, and there are a lot of well-meaning politicians who don't spend the time to look into the issue close enough that confuse free markets with this theory of free trade that David Ricardo put together in the 19th century, which basically said, uh, you know, tie your hands behind your back and, uh, you know, walk into the lion den and, and you'll come out uh, smelling great. Uh, I could go into the technical reasons why that doesn't work. I'd encourage you to read my blog at gregautry.us where I've discussed the, the economic issues behind this. Uh, but you're right, you, you do need to make sure that your, your uh, industries are credibly given an environment in which free companies competing in a free market can produce an efficient outcome. You don't want to be a Europe where you subsidize specific uh, companies that are politically well connected to uh, you know, uh, no end and create inefficiencies, but you don't want to be what we're doing in the United States and Canada right now, which is opening up your market to other state-owned companies which are incredibly subsidized and will come in and kick your little companies butts every time and find a way to bribe blackmail your CEOs or your other companies to make sure that they move their technology and production over there. That just isn't working. It's like, um, you know, we're a soccer team with no coach and a bunch of stars, and so we think we're going to be great because we've got this dream team of stars. Well, our dream teams are all trying to score goals for each other, and if that means making a deal uh, with the other team, uh, they'll do that uh, to screw their own, their own people. The other team has a coach and is making sure everybody's working together and going one direction, even though a lot of their players just suck. Um, they're still going to win, okay? That's, that's just the way it is. So there's a big problem with this free trade, particularly when it comes to doing trade with countries that are absolutely not free. Uh, regarding human rights, yeah, I encourage boycott because I think that if we reduced our purchases of Chinese goods or even made a credible argument that